So today we will be talking about virtual memory. So before we start talking about virtual memory, let's review the main concepts in the previous chapter on memory management. So the main ideas in the previous chapter were uh, contiguous memory allocation and the problems or the issues with contiguous memory allocation and the alternative methods, the non-contiguous memory allocation techniques. So what was the main problem with contiguous memory allocation? Fragmentation. Yeah, fragmentation, exactly. So we looked into contiguous memory allocation uh, and we realized that it uh, it causes a serious problem, which is fragmentation, because insisting on finding a whole contiguous chunk of memory for each program doesn't give the memory management system enough flexibility to utilize existing memory. You may have you know, memory may be uh, available. There may be free memory available. But it's just not contiguous. We don't have that contiguous chunk of memory that we need. So contiguous memory allocation is not a good idea. So that's why people came up with the ideas of segmentation and paging. <coughs> and in segmentation and paging, you uh, divide the address space of a process into pieces that you call segments or pages. And then you do memory allocation at the segment level or at the page level. And that gives the system a lot more flexibility. It makes it uh, much easier to utilize uh, the free memory that is available. Now, in, in the previous chapter, we introduced the notion of the logical address space logical address space of a process and the physical address space. And the main point is that in the logical address space you have a contiguous piece of memory that consists of pages, but physically in physical memory these pages may be scattered all over the memory, so they don't have to be uh, contiguous. So this is page one, page two, page three. So page one may be here, page two may be here, and page three may be here. So they, they don't have to be uh, adjacent in, in physical memory, and they don't have to be in order. So that was the, you know, the concept of the logical address space and the physical address space. Logically, memory looks contiguous. If you have a big array in your program, it's going to look contiguous to you. For you, that array is contiguous, even though physically it may be scattered all over memory. Now with virtual memory, the difference between logical and physical is, is going to be even bigger. The key idea in virtual memory is that when a program is running, normally we don't need to load all the uh, code and the data that constitute that program's uh, address space. So right now, I am running PowerPoint. So PowerPoint is a big application. And that application, or this application, has many features in it, including many features that are used for preparing these slides. Uh, editing and preparing and uh, you know creating graphs and pictures and uh, um, importing pictures from other applications and all of these fancy features you know clearly I'm not using any of these features at this point at this point I'm only using one feature of the program which is displaying these slides and as you can imagine this what I'm using right now is only a small subset of the code that constitutes PowerPoint. 
So from memory management point of view, it doesn't make sense to load all the code that constitutes PowerPoint at this point. It's, I, I'm only using a small subset of the code and a small subset of the data. With code, there is data that that code uses. It's, uh, it doesn't make sense to load everything. I don't need everything. I only need a small subset. And that's exactly the idea of virtual memory. The idea of virtual memory is that at any given point in time, a program will only be using a small subset <coughs> of its own memory. You know, a small subset of the code and a small subset of the data. So, uh, speaking in terms of pages, if I have a program with a thousand that constitutes, that, uh, uh, that consists of a thousand pages, a, at a given point in time, most likely I'm not going to be using the thousand pages. I will probably be using five of them. Only five pages. Like I'm using only a small number of pages from PowerPoint at this point. So now this is the key idea behind virtual memory. People said, OK, why do, why do we have to load the whole thing? We only load uh, the pages that we need. And that's the idea of demand, demand paging. Loading pages on demand, only when you need them. Now, when we talk up about demand paging, uh, the extreme case of demand paging is pure demand paging. In pure demand paging, you strictly load pages based on demand or need. So if a page is not, you don't even consider loading a page until it's requested, until the program references that page. That's pure demand page. But what real systems actually implement is not strict or pure demand paging. It's demand paging, but the system may fetch uh, a couple extra or a few extra pages that are not demanded based on what? Based on what? you might need it. Yeah, and uh, if, uh, you know, if you, are, uh, if you are fetching a page, if the system is fetching one page from, uh, uh, where will it be fetched from, by the way? So when we talk about fetching, fetching from where? Yeah. Uh, hard drive or I.O.? Yeah, from the hard drive, yeah, exactly. So from the disk. So in the idea in virtual memory is all the memory, all the pages that the program needs, everything is on disk. And in physical memory, I only have a subset of these pages. I have the subset that I need at this point. And some systems may, uh, you know, if they fetch one page, they may fetch uh, a couple of pages that are adjacent to it. And the idea here is what? When you fetch a page and then you fetch uh, a neighbor or two neighbors of that page. What's the idea here? Locality. Yeah, locality, exactly. You are trying to take advantage of locality of reference because adjacent pages are likely to be referenced in the future. So now, this is, very much, this is the basic idea. In physical memory, I only have a subset of the pages, only that subset that um, uh, I currently need. Uh, the rest of the pages are on this. Now, the advantages of this, uh, there are two big advantages of doing this. Now, when I say that a program with a thousand pages, uh, I only need five pages or five frames five physical frames to run that program, this means that if this is you know, a thousand and I only have five pages in physical memory, uh, what I, I can use physical memory, I can load a lot more programs. 
this way. If all of this, what I need to load for this program is five pages, then I can load you know, 10 pages for another program and uh, seven pages for another program and 20 pages. So this will allow me to load a lot more programs in memory. Uh, so the, the amount of physical memory that I have doesn't have to be equal to the sum of the, the total sum of pages that the programs need. It has to be equal to the sum of, uh, the sum of pages that <coughs> I'm using or the programs are using, not the total number of pages. So I sum the five, not the thousand, which means that more programs can be loaded in memory. This will give the, the system, uh, this will allow the system to uh, better utilize the resources. Uh, in particular, better utilize the CPU. So now we can load more programs. There will be more programs in the ready queue. And now the scheduler, the CPU scheduler, will have more options to choose from and it can better utilize that resource. Uh, so when a process is in the waiting state, it has more, uh, more options, more ready processes to select from and better utilize the CPU. So it's, uh, it, it allows the system to, to run more processes in, in parallel. It's also less disk access because Without virtual memory, if I insist on loading a thousand pages when I create the program or when I load the program, if I load a thousand pages, loading them, that means loading them from disk to memory. And disk, the disk, as we will see, is the slowest device in the system. This means a lot of disk access or a lot of I.O. because disk is considered I.O. <coughs> The disk is considered I.O. So uh, loading five pages only is going to take a lot, much less time than loading a thousand pages. So it's much less I.O. with virtual memory. So to summarize here, so virtual memory provides even further separation between logical and physical memory. So now, not only can some pages, not only will those uh, pages that constitute the process be scattered in memory, but many of these, these pages will not even exist in physical memory. Many of the pages of a program's logical address space may not exist in, in physical memory at all. So now, you know, the difference between the logical address space and the physical address space is going to be even bigger with virtual memory because some of the pages may not be in physical memory at all. Uh, and the logical address space can be bigger than the physical address space. Uh, so, you know, here I have a thousand pages. Even I, if I have Fifth, uh, you know, 500 pages of physical memory. 500 pages of physical memory here can be used to accommodate many programs. Uh, it allows for more efficient process creation. Why? Because when I load the process, I don't have to load all the pages. Uh, more programs running concurrently for the reason that I have explained that now more programs can be run into memory, and the CPU scheduler will have more options. Less I.O. because there is this less uh, disk space, disk access, sorry, less disk access. So now, uh, the logical address space, we can also call it now virtual address space. So in this chapter, Logical and virtual will be used, the, the terms logical and virtual will be used interchangeably. Okay, so now we have the notion of the virtual address space, which is the same as the logical address space, which will be more different than the 
physical address space, and we, st we will still be using the uh, we will still be using the page table, which is part of the memory management unit, uh, to map logical addresses into physical addresses. So in this chapter, we will we will still be using the page table. In the next slides, you know, we will see the page table and what are the changes that we will have to make to the page table in order to make virtual memory work. So we still have uh, page tables. Uh, in theory, it, you know, virtual memory can be done using demand paging and demand segmentation, but here we focus on demand paging. So the picture is like this. So this is the logical address space or the virtual address space of a program. And this program has pages from 0 through V. Uh, now, the memory map is the page table. You know, the, that maps virtual memory into physical memory. In physical memory, we'll have a subset of the pages, but all the pages are on disk. We will see uh, a clearer picture in a few minutes. But for now, let's look at this, the, 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 the picture of virtual memory. All the pages are on disk. A subset of them are in physical memory. And I have a page table that maps uh, physical, uh, virtual to physical. Uh, so that, that's very much the, the basic idea. We'll see more details later. Now if we look at the address space of a process that consists of the code segment, data segment, heap and stack, and the heap uh, and the stack grow in different directions, uh, between the heap and the stack there is a hole. Now in virtual memory, I don't have to allocate physical memory for this until it's needed. You know, so that when a program is running, it, uh, you know, depending on what it's doing, depending on program behavior, it may be th the memory that the program is using may be growing. And with virtual memory, I have a lot more flexibility because I can allocate, I need to allocate frames only on demand. Only when I need more memory, I allocate more memory. So virtual memory, uh, virtual memory management gives the system a lot <coughs> more flexibility in, in handling, uh, you know, dynamic memory allocation. Demand paging, like I said, the idea of demand paging is fetching pages on demand. If pages are fetched strictly on demand, that's called pure demand paging. But if I fetch, if there is some kind of prediction in the system that will fetch a few pages based on prediction or based on uh, expected future need, uh, that will still be demand paging, but not pure demand paging. Uh, when the program references a page, first we will check on that reference if it's valid or invalid. So if a, if a program has a, thou <coughs> a thousand pages and it references page 7,000, so page 7,000 doesn't exist. So that's an invalid access. But if it's referencing something valid, something between you know, page 0 to page 999, that's in the valid range. But not all of these are going to be in physical memory. So we will need a way of checking whether that page that is being referenced is in physical memory or not. If it's in physical memory, we access it like normal. If it's not, then the system will have to fetch it from this and load it into physical memory. Now this is, you know, this shows you swapping for a, of a whole program. In virtual memory, this is not what we do. We don't swap a whole program. We swap a page. 
So it's basically what virtual memory is about is doing the swapping in and swapping out of at the page level rather than the whole address space level. Uh, now, in order to, to implement this, we need a way of detecting whether the page that is requested by a program is in physical memory or not. And that mechanism is the valid invalid bit that is added to the page table. So now, in the page table, there is an additional bit that is added to each frame. Uh, yeah, so there is an additional bit that indicates whether that frame is in physical memory or not. So V means valid, it's in physical memory. I means invalid, it's not in physical memory. It's on disk. So let's see how this is, this is used. I think this is a very good picture that shows uh, you know, how virtual memory works. So we have logical memory. So we have, in this example, a program that consists of eight pages, zero through eight, uh, seven. And this is physical memory, and this is the disk. Now on disk, we have all pages. So everything is on disk. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all of them are on disk. Only a subset of them are in physical memory, so I have Page zero, which is in frame four, is in physical memory, so I have the valid bit set. I have page two, which is in frame six, in physical memory, and the valid bit is set. And I have page five, which is in frame nine, and the valid bit is set. Now for the rest of the pages, the valid bit is reset, or it's I here, indicating that it's not in physical memory. So now when we access, when the program references a page, if it references page zero, it's in physical memory, so this is a normal access and it will just access that page. But what if the program attempts to reference page one, which is not in physical memory, it's on disk, now we need to fetch that page from disk. Now, who will be doing that fetching of the page from disk to memory? Will it be the application or the system? system. Yeah, it's going to be the system. So we will have to give control to the system somehow. And that's why implementing virtual memory requires hardware support. So hardware support by having one kind of exception or an exception or a, an interrupt that will give control to the system when the program makes access to an invalid page. So, uh, and this is what we call a page fault. By the way, we will in the next lecture, we will, uh, we will learn more details about, about page faults. But for now, the concept is a page fault is when a program attempts to access a page that is not in physical memory, like page one in this example, that will result in a page fault. A page fault is, a, is an exception, and that will give control to the uh, operating system. The operating system now will be in charge and it will load that requested page, like page one in this case, it will load it from disk into physical memory and it will update the corresponding page table entry to reflect that this page is now valid, it's in physical memory. Uh, and do you think that that page fault is a slow or a fast process? How fast or slow do you think page fault handling will be? 
That'd be kind of slow because you have to go all the way to the disk to grab Yeah, it. exactly. You have to go to the disk and the disk is very slow. <laughs> Keep in mind that the disk is very slow as we will see it's orders of magnitude slower than memory. So going to the disk is very slow. It's going to take a lot of time. So that's why, uh, you know, that's the, the good thing about giving this to the, this responsibility to the operating system. The operating system will, uh, will handle the page fault and will, will send a request to the disk to load that page. But in the meanwhile, it will give the CPU to another process. So while one process is waiting for a page fault or for page fault handling, the system can give the CPU to other processes. Now, uh, you know, page faults, we'll talk about page faults in detail next time. But the idea now is we know now it's clear to us that page fault handling is very slow. Now, how does virtual memory work? Then, why does virtual memory work? Uh, you know, uh, effectively in, in real in real programs. If the page fault is too slow, or the page fault uh, page fault handling takes a lot of time, and whenever a program references a page that is not in physical memory, we'll have to take a page fault give control to the operating system, and the operating system uh, fetches that page from disk to memory, sounds like there will be lots of time that programs will be spending waiting for the system to handle a page fault. So it sounds like this is going to slow programs considerably. Now the question is, why doesn't this slow programs considerably? Seems like they're probably really good at it, so maybe 99% of the time you won't ever have a page fault. If you do, you just run out of programs in the background. Okay, so so you're saying 99% of the time, or most of the time, there will be no page fault. Why? Because it already has loaded all of the pages that are around that he said it was already working on. So it already has extra pages that you'll probably use. Probably. Okay. And why, but the program will still keep, you know, accessing more memory. So it's, at a given point in time, the program may be accessing five pages, but you know, at time t, it's accessing five pages. At time t plus delta, it will be accessing maybe, uh, yeah, five pages, but they, they will be different pages. Mm. Yeah, well, it only needs to load them once, right? And it might refer back to those pages a bunch of times. Why? What's the concept? Yeah. Is it not the concept of locality that it will note that yeah, it exactly. has to go nearby? Yeah, exactly. It's the concept of locality. Yeah. It's the concept of locality that w that makes uh, you, you know virtual memory work effectively. Otherwise, it would you know kill the, the performance of the system. <coughs> so, locality of reference means that if we fetch a page, then uh, there will be multiple accesses to the, the program will be making multiple accesses to the same page. 